Watch out below. This is one of my favorite articles so far this year. You guys, there is so much going on behind the scenes that just the average people do not know about. And probably even the people who are above average don't even know about. Um, Swiss Central Bank posts biggest loss in its 116-year history, accounting for uh, 18% of the Swiss GDP was lost last year. Now, before I get into this, you need to understand something. Here in America, we have the Federal Reserve. It's a fake bank. It's not federal. It's a bunch of bankers just uh, stealing money from all of us. Okay, set that aside. You have the Swiss Central Bank. The one big difference that the Swiss Central Bank has is that they are allowed, the Swiss, Swiss Central Bank, to trade in the stock market and the currency market and the bond market. Can't do that at the Fed. I mean, technically you can now because the Fed after COVID literally bought every single asset class. So the Fed actually owns everything. So technically they can, but again, just for the sake of this video, set that aside for right now. The Swiss Central Bank was investing so much last year that it lost a ton of money on a lot of extremely risky currency plays. Um, let me go back to here. Okay. Swiss Central Bank posts biggest loss in its 116-year uh, history. The Swiss National Bank on Monday reported a loss of 132 billion Swiss francs for the 2022 financial year. That's 18% of the country's GDP. Unbelievable. Let's read a few of these bullet points here. Uh, it lost 131 billion in currency positions and 1 billion on Swiss franc positions. As a result, it will not make its usual payout to the government. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, probably right. Okay, here it says uh, this represents the biggest loss in the central central bank's 116-year history and equates to roughly 18% of Switzerland's projected GDP. Its previous record loss was 23 billion in 2015. Now, some of you guys might be saying, "Well, gosh, 143 billion dollar loss. Where did that go?" That's the question you cannot ask. That is the question you can't ask. Okay, and I'm not even going to go there, so don't ask me where it went. Okay, now it says here, of the losses, 131 billion came from its foreign currency position and 1 billion from its Swiss franc position. Now, what in the world? Where do, why do I recognize, why do I recognize the Swiss banking drama? Oh, yes, that's because back in October, a few months ago, the Swiss National Bank was forced to admit that it was on the brink of bankruptcy along with Credit Suisse, who we'll go into in just a moment. Swiss National Bank makes another large draw on the Fed swap line. That's right, my friends. You, the taxpayers, took on all of the risk of the Swiss citizens. And for that, they thank you. They will not have enough money to mail Toblerone to us this year, however, because they lost $140 billion. That is right. Last October... When the Swiss National Bank was losing money left and right, the Federal Reserve opened up a currency swap line and said, hey, here's some dollars. Give us those francs. So as if this wasn't bad enough, the wonderful, beautiful, very intelligent PhD people up in Washington, D.C. and New York decided to give them a ton. How much exactly? Just six and a half billion francs. Not a big deal. Not a big deal, except for that a week earlier they took out $3 billion. So it's really it's like almost $10 billion, but like, you know, what's the money among friends? Um, not to mention, you know, I forgot. Let me type this one in real quick. Credit Suisse admits. I'm not even sure I'll be able to find it because I should have had this article. Um, 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 Credit Suisse last fall had to admit during their quarterly earnings that they were this close to going bankrupt. Um, and I should have had the article pulled up, but if you go search it, you'll find it. It's not that difficult to find. Now you might be saying, all right, Ryan, like, okay, that sounds bad, but like we put it into context, I'm a visual guy. And lucky for you, I'm a visual guy as well. And so here's how to visualize. Here's a little visual for all of you. The Swiss National Bank, this is how bad they did. Like you guys, people have good years and people have some bad years, but like, Heads had better roll at every upper executive office in Switzerland, in every banking, in every uh, central bank position for what happened here. Unbelievable that you could lose this much money. Now, okay, one of the reasons I said earlier, don't ask me where that money went, okay? And I'm not going to tell you, so don't ask. And certainly don't go do your own research. But one of the things I will tell you is that UBS, um, which is Swiss, Credit Suisse, which is a Swiss, these are very, some of the biggest banks in the world, 
have all been extremely, extremely um, shaky the last year and a half. Um, if you remember, um, a lot of these hedge funds that went bankrupt on their uh, GameStop play were absorbed by Credit Suisse. And these were not just small hedge funds. These were multi-billion dollar hedge funds. And Credit Suisse, for some stupid reason, bought them and absorbed all of their toxic assets. So, you know, I don't know why they would do that. Don't ask me. Um, but the same people that decided to acquire those hedge funds somehow lost all that money. So, uh, you know, don't ask me. That's what I said. One other thing to consider here that um, is deep, deep in, if you do a lot of research and read in between the lines, UBS Bank. Okay, UBS Bank. Um, again, it's a Swiss bank. Hang on, let me just type it in. You'll you'll know the logo. UBS Bank. Um, you'll you'll rec you know you remember this place? You recognize that logo, right? With the keys and whatnot. Okay. This is very important for you to remember. This was the Swiss National Bank's annual report from last year on page 18, buried deep down in there. It says, "Quote." The Swiss National Bank noted in its report published June of 2021 that the two globally active Swiss banks, Credit Suisse and UBS Group, were well-placed to face the challenges presented by the current environment and support the real economy. At the same time, the lost potential of Credit Suisse and UBS under the stress scenarios remained substantial. Furthermore, both banks took significant risks. The capital requirements under the current too-big-to-fail regulations are thus necessary to ensure adequate resilience at the two globally active banks. Essentially what that little report there from the Swiss National Bank is saying that, hey, you know what, we've got a thing going on here. You know, you guys leave us alone. Come here if you want to hide money, but you know, we know what we're doing. We're good at risk on, risk off. You know, we're really good with long and short strategies. Um, and, and, but we can, we, we even though we're, you know, um, failing stress tests of too big to fail, these, the, these are two banks that know how to take very risky, uh, risky strategies. Well, you guys, uh, people talk about the Swiss bank and the UBS and the uh, Credit Suisse as being the next Lehman Brothers moment. If you remember, Lehman Brothers is what kicked off the 2008 crash. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. Um, all I know is I've done a couple of videos on this with you. I, you. Those of you clients that I talk to on the phone regularly, we've talked about this article. It's just it keeps building. It keeps getting better and better. And truly, at some point, not to be corny, but there will be a straw that bait that breaks the Toblerone's back. And uh, at what point will it happen? I don't know. But all I know is that you and I, because the Fed uh, has been so kind to get ourselves involved, that if the Swiss really, really, really kick the bucket on this, we here in America are going to have some U.S. dollar uh, exposure to this. Um, so you better bet it's going to affect the stock market, the real estate market, everything. So anyway... You better believe this is one of my favorite articles to follow just because of how unbelievably, um, how much, uh, you know, there's a, there's a phrase in uh, called moral hazard. Let's see, moral hazard. How do you define moral hazard? Um, the lack of incentive to guard against risk where one is protected from its consequences. I mean, the amount of moral hazard at the very top echelons of global banking is unbelievable. You better believe this is a story I will continue to follow and show you. I love it. Thanks.